What's up, everybody? It's me, E-Man, from E-Man's Movie Reviews, and today we're going to review The Marvels. So let's jump right into a quick intro. Carol Danvers gets her powers entangled with Kamala Khan and Monica Rambeau, forcing them to work together to save the universe from a bigger threat. Okay, enough of that. Let's get right into the good. The good. Well, I'll say this. The three main you know, actors in this with Brie, Tiona, and uh, Iman, I thought they all had really good chemistry and the acting was pretty decent. You really get to see it on display when they have to deal with their entanglement challenges and when they have to deal with more personal issues. Now, Aman, I thought, easily stole the show with her charm and infectious personality as Kamala Khan. She had some of the best jokes and commentary that made her character feel more connected to audiences. Tiona Paris, I thought, also gave a very solid performance. And I personally just really like to see her character grow more in special ways. And I definitely think comic fans will be happy with her. Now, as for the director, Nia DaCosta, I thought that she handled a number of things pretty well. I loved how she included Kamala's daydream art. It was a great way to maintain the same vibe that Kamala had set in the Ms. Marvel Disney Plus series. Now, DaCosta also made a prudent decision in including some of the much needed flashbacks for audiences who haven't seen the Disney Plus Marvel shows. This really came in handy regarding the rift between Carol and Monica. And like with the additional context, I thought that the drama felt at least a little bit more authentic. Now, besides that, DaCosta also did a really good job with the power entanglement situation. I did enjoy the action scenes for what they were. And I thought the VFX kind of looked pretty crisp. Now, there were some other plot points that worked really well. And I thought this was definitely one of my favorites. And it was actually just making Captain Marvel vulnerable because I've said this many, many times ever since the first Captain uh, Marvel movie came out that she has a Superman problem, which is basically she's too overpowered and has literally no weaknesses, you know, and that to me was always a problem. It doesn't matter whether you're a woman. It doesn't matter, you know, what the character is. No superhero should be just completely perfect and have no vulnerability or weaknesses. I mean, at this point, Captain Marvel's only weakness is that she just can't be everywhere at once. And honestly, that gets boring. That's why they call it the Superman problem, because Superman was getting kind of boring if he could just fix and beat up everybody. Right. So um, I love the fact that this movie actually found a way to make Carol vulnerable and and weakened at some at some point so that we can actually see her overcome those things and then we could start cheering for her at those moments and in addition to those physical challenges for captain marvel this movie also gave a little bit more depth to her character with the additional backstory i still think it's a little bit of a shame that audiences didn't get more of this before going into the movie but either way it did help the character out Okay, enough of that. Let's get right into the bad. The bad. The biggest problem with the Marvels is the editing. The way this movie was chopped up and the sequencing of the storytelling, it just felt very odd and it didn't feel like it worked. It felt disjointed and scattered at times, you know, and it was helpful to see some of the flashbacks and some different scenes to gain additional context. That did help. However, there seem to be other aspects of the characters or parts of their backstory that could have been fleshed out a little bit more. One case to look at would be with Captain Marvel. Yes, there are certain scenes that she emotionally deals with, but as a viewer, it was hard for me to connect with her because of how the story seemed kind of force-fed into the background information. In other words, we're supposed to sit here and feel all emotional with Captain Marvel with some piece of information that you just showed us like for two seconds. Like, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Like, if you want the emotional payoff, you have to earn it with some sort of journey and just throwing in a random clip is not going to do the trick. So look, even though I've watched practically everything the MCU has ever made, you, just trying to throw these emotional things at me and making me want to feel for Captain Marvel. I'm sorry. The emotions felt kind of hollow. And while we're talking about hollow and, and editing, 
The other victim here for the editing was the villain. Oh my gosh, talk about being forgettable. Now look, the actress did a good job. This is not on her, but it is definitely on the writing and the editing of the film. And she is just literally one of the most unimportant MCU villains to date. The character's motivations were clear, but she barely seemed like a viable threat to the heroes. Plus, the choppy edit really hurt her character's backstory. Again, they wanted us to draw some level of empathy or understanding for the villain, but because of the disjointed, overarching story in the MCU, that was a lost effort. I mean, at no point in the MCU history had they ever drawn some line of connection for us to feel sorry for the Kree. I don't care about the Kree. Last time we saw the Kree, we're out here terrorizing folks, conquering planets and stuff, brainwashing people, and now you want me to feel bad because Captain Marvel, like, retaliated? Like, I don't care. And that was just a missed opportunity that if they wanted us to feel for this villain, they should have shown us more of the Kree, similar to how they've shown us the scrolls and shown us how, like, oh, the scrolls, man, we could have some good scrolls, some bad scrolls. But right now, I'm like, look, if the Kree die, they die. Oh, well. Last but not least, I am not a fan of the overt goofiness in this movie. Now, once again, do not come in my comments trying to sit here and say, E-Man, you don't like humor. No, no, no. I love humor. Humor is great in these movies. But there has to be a line. And this movie started to cross that line. And it got too silly too wacky and it started to detract and distract away from the actual film so again adding levity and humor to this movie is just fine i actually thought it worked best with kamala khan scenes the problem is that the marvels is the movie that seemed to go out of its way to be silly we literally saw this same thing happen with thor love and thunder or ant-man and the wasp quantumania Speaking of which, the same way those screaming goats were a miss in Thor 4, so were the cats or the Flurgans in this movie. It really felt as though the executives were like, what do people like? People like cats. Do we have cats? Yup, we got Flurgan. All right, add more cats. They're gonna love that. Like, it was just completely forced and very unnecessary. I mean, they essentially traded screaming goats for cats. That's whack. I was also completely turned off when the characters visited that water world planet because at that moment, the Marvels felt like it morphed into a Disney movie or something. Like for a split second, I thought I was watching Aladdin or something. Furthermore, the wacky tone made the characters feel completely out of character. Nick Fury is probably the best example because he seemed like a completely different person. I mean, a lot of Nick Fury's lines sounded like they were bloopers, but they just kind of left them in there because it was funny to them. But never mind the fact that this man literally just had all this PTSD and secret invasion. Never mind the fact that this man is the no nonsense, straight to business and facts type of guy who wants to save the world. Now, black girl magic, like, it's like, what? That's not him. Like, why are y'all trying to make him act like this in this movie? When you've had all these other films where he is one certain type of way. And I'm not saying that character growth isn't important. What I'm saying is this felt like an abrupt change that did not feel organic for his character. Anyway, let's get on to the reason. The reason. The Marvels offers a mixed bag of cosmic events and superficial fun, but falls short due to the bad editing. The editing issues prevented what could have been a more impactful story, and it created a weird feeling that audiences miss crucial elements to other stories. Thankfully, the movie's ending does help by adding some connective tissue to a larger issue in the MCU continuity. At the same time, the Marvels does build on characters, but it doesn't make the strongest case to see more sequels for those characters either. Now, I think it's fair to say that judging off of this movie, the clear target audience was younger female, you know, viewers. 
And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Marvel is perfectly within their right. Any movie studio is in their right to take their films and target it to certain demographics. So with that said, I would say that this movie is probably not going to appeal to everybody. But one thing I think a lot of us can agree on is that it at least is better than the first Captain Marvel movie. And yes, I know that's a low bar. Sadly, this movie seems to be a byproduct of the decision making that was made during the pandemic with Marvel. This was a time, keep in mind, when Marvel had not realized that the silly and wacky stuff simply do not work, especially when it comes to making long lasting classic MCU films. Look, the moment they put in the musical number in this, they completely lost me. Like, again, this was not my cup of tea, but I guess it'd be okay for other people. But anyway, when it comes to the rating for the Marvels, I, I, I've got to give it a six and a half out of ten. Um, again, this movie might not have been my cup of tea, but I can understand how it would appeal to people like my young daughter or to other folks that enjoy the Marvels and those characters. Um, I just don't think that this was the strongest movie, um, but I don't think it was like complete trash either because I've seen complete trash and this was not it. Um, now, I will say that the mid credit scene is probably uh, going to get people talking the most. You've probably already heard rumors about it. Um, I would recommend that if you can avoid the spoilers from it, if you do plan on watching this movie, um, try to watch this without knowing what the post credit scene is. Um, it'll at least make it a better experience going in there without knowing. I I'll just say that. Outside of all that, um, the Marvels does not feel like a must watch event. It does not feel like a movie that you have to run to the theaters to go see. To be honest, I do think it'd be just fine if you streamed it or even if you skipped it, eh, I can understand that too. Um, so I would just say, if you plan on watching it, definitely do not expect a serious movie. Do not expect an all time classic. Um, go in there with extremely low expectations and you might actually have a better time than most people are trying to advertise that you're not going to have. Um, but anyway, that's my thoughts on the Marvel. Do you plan on watching the Marvels um, or have you seen it? If you have or when you do, come on back to this video and let me know what did you think about it. Um, if you are, by the way, interested in my spoiler thoughts on this, go on and head over to my man's uh, YouTube video, uh, Just My Opinion Reviews. He just I just per, uh, participated with him. Uh, the movie files, um, you know, and we got together and we talked about it for, I think, over like an hour um, going over the specific things that worked or that didn't work for us on the movie. So you can go check out my thoughts there as well. But anyway, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out the next time I drop a video. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.